This is the Brian No Show. Stupid. On NBC Sports Northwest, 620 Rip City Radio. All right, very pleased to welcome in Tom Bahali, former Chiefs linebacker, joining us here on the Brian No Show. And he's at the gym. You're getting a workout in, right? You got your kids over there? Yeah, I am. At the gym. What have you been doing at the gym today, Tom Bahali? Uh, just basketball. I come in around 11, uh, play with some older guys, uh, a lot of really great shooters. But just to get up and down the court, that's all I'm looking for. I'm, I'm usually like a point guard out here. I just like to dish the ball. I don't, you know, I'm big enough to just take advantage of the, just playing basketball. I like it. So how good of a shooter are you from the outside? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good. Uh, you know, back in my day, uh, the Keystone camp, I won a free throw contest. It's like a thousand guys, so I can shoot. But, you know, I choose not to do a lot of shooting. I like to pass. Okay, now I have to come clean, all right? So I did. I I had a... I had to take 100 NBA range three-pointers one time, and I made 41, which is respectable. And then we had another contest shortly after, and we shot 100 free throws, and I only made 49, okay? So you, as an accomplished free throw shooter, how would you describe me only making 49 out of 100 free throws? That's pretty good. I, I really think that's, <laughs> that's, that's really good. I think that might be... You know, a center in the NBA, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, dude. You are so positive. I love that. That is the best way to be critical of someone is like, you're kind of like Andre Drummond, right? Like, that's pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. funny, man. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, so if we focus on the Chiefs, the team you played for, what are you seeing from them defensively based on last week's game? against Cleveland? I, I think the coach does a lot of mixing and coverage. Uh, I think they go from uh, maybe three to two. Uh, sometimes they disguise it so well. I think they use the safety pr pretty pretty well. Uh, Mat Mateo, uh, I guess that's how you pronounce it. But I think they use him pretty well. They blitz him. Um, so it, I don't think they're doing too much. They're playing really good defense. Dan uh, uh, Dan Sorison, he's doing pretty well playing the position. He's a solid player, um, a hard hitter. Um, but yeah, I don't think they're doing too much. But their disguising coverage is is come is kind of taking uh, teams off a little bit. I know this week has been all about Patrick Mahomes and him not finishing the game against Cleveland, and is he going to play against Buffalo? And I get it, right? We understand how much of a mega star he is, but. Do you think that the Chiefs' defense and how they performed has been overlooked because it's been mostly about Mahomes this week? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. I think because the spotlight is on uh, Patrick all the time, and it shows when he's not playing how the team performs and how his leadership is, is valuable to the team. But for the defense, I think they play just uh, – a big of a role as, as as Patrick because they play as a unit. I mean, the guys play together. Um, they I don't hear them pointing fingers at each other, and, and it's not like when I was there. It's mostly we, we got sacks, we got this, but they find a way to play together. And I think with Patrick uh, not being there, those guys stepped up. Um, I, I just believe that that hit by Dan by Dan Sorensen uh, was it just changed the entire game because it just looked like. You know, those guys was going to score and they were going to change the outcome. And, and uh, Dan did pretty well with the hit. <clears throat> I got to ask your opinion about this because I hate that when the ball goes through the end zone, the other team gets the ball without recovering it. And then they also get it at the 20-yard line. They get field position on top of it. As a former defensive player, I, I'm bracing for impact that you're like, I love this. I love this rule here. So how do you feel about the rule? I, I think it's just, I mean, because you're looking at one yard and these guys score, but just that one yard, we get to hit the ball and it gets in the end zone and then we start at the 20. But I, I think it's just, I think it's a it's a good rule. It's a touchback. It's like, a, you know, and, and if they recover in the end zone, it's a touchdown. So it's almost, it's too fair for the offense because, you know, they, 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 they get the credit to either score 
and it's a mistake if you fumble it that close to the end zone. So, and then we get it on the 20. But I, I think it's a just rule. He's Tom Ali, former Chiefs linebacker here on the Brian No Show. I'm curious what you think about the Bills and what they might do defensively because, as you well know, when the two teams met in the regular season, the Bills played coverage. They played back, and they dared the Chiefs to run the ball, and the Chiefs ran it for 245 yards. So what do you think the Bills will do defensively to try to defend Mahomes and company? I think they'll do the same thing. Uh, you know, they're not, they're not – going to let Patrick beat them in the air. I think they, they'll try to just uh, limit all the big plays and allow, see if, if uh, the Chiefs will uh, make the mistakes instead of them making the mistake. Um, uh, but I, I believe if Patrick playing, they will try to get after Patrick now. You know, they know he's a little banged up throughout the season, so I can anticipate them coming out and trying to rattle him a little bit. But you know, it, it's football. It, when when that whistle blow, they got to play. We we got to play. What do you see from Clyde edwards alaire where he's been banged up throughout a lot of the year, but he should be able to play. So if they play coverage and play back, do you think that edwards alaire could have a big day? Yeah, I'm really fond of that guy. Um, at the beginning of the seasons, I'm used to, you know, the fast guys, uh, the, the Jamar Charles, the you know the, the the quick guys that that just gets gets the hundred yards right off the back. But this is a tough running uh, back that the Chiefs was able to acquire. He's he's tough. He he runs the ball pretty well. So, you know, having him back this week would be a huge positive with, with the other guys that's on the team. And you know, hopefully he can he can rack it up again as he did the first. Okay, last football question for you: If the Chiefs are able to win. Would you rather see the Chiefs face Aaron Rodgers and the Packers or Tom Brady and Tampa? Well, I want to see Tom Brady, to be honest with you. I'm a, I'm, I'm a huge Tom Brady fan, and everyone was, uh, you know, really against how he was playing earlier. He had, you know, he's done. But some, somehow he managed to move this team all the way to a championship game. And we were used to seeing Tom and, and uh, Patrick play in these championship games till you know, Tom went to the NFC, which... Now, I would love to see them play in the Super Bowl because I think that that calls for a great hype. Aaron Rodgers, of course, I, I believe, is playing with one of their, his best teams he's ever had in, in Green Bay. But, it, 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 you know, they lost to Tom Brady, and I'm sure Tom wants to come up there and prove that he can do it twice. Did you ever have sacks against Tom Brady? Yeah, I, I've had a couple sacks against that guy. <laughs> a couple sacks, a few sacks. Uh, I enjoy sacking Tom. I mean, because you're talking about the pinnacle of football, the top, the top guy. So playing against you know, guys like him, you need to get there, and you know, just it's, it's a it's a gratifying feeling. I enjoy sacking him. Now, refresh my memory. I don't remember you being a sack dance guy. Do I have that right or wrong? Well, I didn't dance, I, you know, it was, uh, but we did do some dances, J Justin and I, when, when, in, earlier in our career, we did kid and play when we sacked Ben Roethlisberger, but no, I didn't dance, I like to, you know, fly like a bird, you know, get up and wave my wing, you know, set me free, <laughs> but no, I, I didn't dance. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's fine, man, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. By the way, non-football stuff, how's the music going, how's everything going with that? I slow down on the music a little bit, focus more on my family because that's what's more important. Um, uh, ended up, we, I got married to my wife. Uh, we, we just, you know, COVID-19 really kind of pulled everything together so we can uh, focus on our family. The music is still there. I still do it. I, have, I actually have an album coming out on February 14. It's called Love and Lights. Um, love songs. You know, people will love it. Uh, they listen to this style of music. It's Afrobeat. It's very, very, very friendly to the air. Um, but not not as much as I, as I was doing. I was actually going on tour. Um, all of those things I kind of halted. And uh, I think it was it was it was for a good reason. And I like how I do music now. I'm not pushed to do anything. I can do the music. I can put it out in the market. If people want to go hear it, they can. You know, that's how I'm, you know, I'm rocking out right now. I love it, man. That's awesome. Are you still, are you still throwing around, around the weights in the, in the gym? Like you just hitting the basketball courts, you're throwing around weights when you're in there as well. 
I'm just, I'm, I'm a big guy. So like, you know, I need to take the pressure off the heart, keep the cardio going. I got a lot of jujitsu, I uh, do jujitsu every day with my, my buddy Dave. Um, we have Midwest gym here. I was bred by the, the Gracie's family. So uh, I just had Hidong come up to teach the class and teach us for like four days. Hidong, Gracie, he's like, uh, I mean, the family tree comes down, he's the third generation. But these guys took me since I was uh, 21 and I've been doing it for 14 years. I'm a purple belt, two stripes, but I only, I roll with uh, majority black belts. And that, yeah, the way I can't put, the, you know, I don't mind lifting here and there, but that stuff is tough on my body. 20 years of football, it's, it's no joke. I feel it every day. I can imagine, man. Are you a MMA fan? Yeah, no, because you know, like it's 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 brutal. Uh, sometimes I don't approve of how they go about it, and I'm more technical. I, I wish those guys can display the martial art on on the side of boxing or or or, or sparring in, in the Gracie in the, in the jiu-jitsu form, but it, it just becomes like you know, kind of evil sometimes, you know, like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I like it. You're more of a lover than a fighter, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, we, we can fight and, and we can take care of each other. But sometimes it just seems like, you know, for the prize, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, willing to gouge your eyes off. I'm, I'm willing to knock you. You know, it's just, it's detrimental to the, the human soul and, I, I I like it and don't like it. At times I watch it. At times I'm just like I, I really can't watch this stuff. You know, it might ruin my brain. You know, football did a lot of damage. You know, aggressive aggression is is classical. So I'm trying to kind of veer from that side of things and and be more of a calm person. <laughs> I hear you, man. I get it. Okay, last one for you, Tom Bahali, as a musician. So I have to pay off a bet. All right. I had a football bet with a coworker. It didn't work out for me. The bet was the loser sings a love ballad to the winner. So I'm taking a song. I'm changing the lyrics up. But I want it to be a good performance. So do you have any advice for me to do a good job when I sing this love ballad? Well, uh, if, if, if you are a singer... Uh, then you'll be fine, but you have to be able to breathe. So every time you're uh, going to go ahead and sing, try to bring in a lot of air and, and see if you can carry those notes while, you know, you got air in your lungs. But if you don't, you know, your voice is not really going to come out right. And uh, that's that's the best advice I can give because usually when I'm, I'm recording, I pull a lot of breath and and at this point, I'm able to do, you know, a lot of, you know, I'm not going to sing for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give us a first. Just, just give us one line, Tamba, huh? Do we get one line? One line. Um, I said... <laughs> I'm trying to think of a duet, you know. I, 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 I'll, I'll sing the other side of it, so you're not left hanging, you know. If I could think of a duet, I'd hit you with it. I, I have so many songs, and it's just like for me to just, say, girl, I like your style, of, it, 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 you know, something like that. There you go. <laughs> that works well. Like, if I can come close to what you just did. I will be completely <laughs> fine, man. We'll be good to go. But, hey, we'll let you get back to uh, – go ahead. What were you going to say, Tamba? If you leave me, girl, you know I'll go fly you. Something like that. You know. Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. Say, dude, you're a pro. You got this, man. But, hey, Tamba, always appreciate your time, man. We'll let you get back to the hoops and your family, but always a treat. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. There he is, Tamba Ali. Former Chiefs linebacker. That was great.